What is going on, everyone? It is Zach, or Rated, whatever you want to call me, back again with another tutorial. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a pretty cool tutorial for a lot of people that are wanting to get into merch and uh, designs for, you know, different types of ideas and different applications of a already existing uh, logo or branding thing. Uh, but, yeah, so this is basically going to be an intro on how to make uh, basic uh, crest designs or crests. Uh, for people that don't know what they are, they're little circles, squares, shields, diamonds, different types of things that are used a lot on apparel. Um, there's many different examples you can check on pretty much every single person who does um, any types of logos in general or uh, crests in general, merch, merch uh, almost every band you can think of does some sort of logo like that. Um, big companies do logos like that to kind of commemorate uh, when they were established, all those types of things. Now crests obviously can be done in many different types of ways. They can actually be a logo themselves, they can be a brand mark, they can be, you know, uh, a, a stamp. You can do them in many many different ways but today we're just going to kind of go around go you know through the steps that i take to um make them and what i try to look for uh depending upon um something or depending upon the brand that i'm working with obviously or if i'm making it just from scratch so before we even get started thanks again for all the support on the last video that was awesome and uh it was we got a great uh, amount of people coming out and thank you guys all for the amazing compliments um and hopefully we can just keep moving forward from there. Um, yeah, so if you haven't, check all the applicable links in the uh, below. I can leave templates out for people that are want to. I'll throw up download links. Join the Discord server so you guys can come hang out and we'll have some fun. Uh, talk around every little thing we can think of. Design, music, Call of Duty, whatever it has to be. Uh, just want to come come out and hang out, and uh, don't be afraid to type in the chat. I'll be around, and yeah. Okay, so let's get into the actual tutorial. So today we're going to focus on kind of a circular crest. Uh, you can kind of do it in multiple different ways. It all kind of depends on what you want to do. Uh, I use Illustrator, obviously, and um, that's what we're going to be using. It's the main way that I know people use uh, or make these obviously <clears throat> so just create a document um, I always create you know just a letter size document so eight and a half by eleven and I just stretch it out and, you know just in case I need more room uh, you can do whatever it, it's just an artboard you know and you can do as you please but um, so we're gonna start with the ellipse tool and the first thing we're gonna do is create an ellipse now the uh, and ellipse circle whatever you want to talk, call it um and the first and the thing you can think of is uh, or might think of is okay well we're done we did our uh, we did our circle unfortunately that is not the case <laughs> uh, a lot of the times you can get away with adding a stroke like this and kind of just keeping it pretty simple um, and a lot of times you can't um, I personally like to start with an actual circle uh, that is completely filled so just filling everything and taking away the stroke and making my own sized cir uh, circle or you know it uh, outlined circle little line or whatever uh, so the first thing I do is is I want to duplicate this obviously keep it on top of this so find the center and switch it to white and then we're gonna hold the alt and shift keys and just play with what the size of the stroke we want to play with so if we switch this to white you're obvious I mean this is obviously a, a non opaque or an op opaque layer um, <clears throat> so it's not transparent it's not something that we're seeing through we're just using this as kind of a guideline so that is the first thing that we're gonna do and I think from this purpose I think we have a good look right there so select and like um, the prior tutorial we are going to minus the back 
and we have a compound path now. And what this is doing is, is it's just making this an actual path instead of playing with an actual stroke. You can use a stroke that way as long as you don't use a fill. Um, I prefer to use these as um, <clears throat> actual paths so then I can adjust them as I please. Second thing we're going to do is, is we're going to duplicate this again. We're going to center it and shrink it. Now you're probably thinking, okay, I could have done this myself, Zach. You know, what's so, you know, incredibly important about this? Well, this is kind of where the beauty of designing a crest or a logo or those types of little circular fun stuff starts. Is This is kind of uh, the, s the start of it. So what I'm doing here uh, is I'm selecting the inner coils while holding shift obviously the inner coil paths and I'm just gonna shrink the inside to kinda give it the look of, of this circle now I already can tell you right away that from what I've done right now this is gonna have to come in a little bit more to give us a nice you know focal point on the outside so once we have this, we are starting out great. So a lot of crests you'll see have a big type across the center. Now the reason, again, why I why I chose to do a uh, for lack of a better term non-stroke uh, circle is again for pathfinders. I'm going to be easily be able to uh, delete these types of things and instead of having to worry about actually you know screwing with the paths oh uh, and you know using different types of stroke techniques i prefer not to use them some people do uh but totally up to you so i just put a white box over here to see what i'm going to be looking at um and then we're going to add some sort of type so we'll put you know name and we'll just start to play with typefaces. Now, obviously, I'm not going to take up the whole tutorial sitting here and playing with typefaces. I'm going to go to something that I, you know, I kind of can see being used. Um, you know, this is totally subjective, you know, whatever you feel in the type of style you're going with, go for it. I, you know, me personally, I just it all depends on the client, all depends on the type of person I'm working for or the type of, you know, brand I'm working for. But um, for the big type, I usually go with something pretty heavy, uh, especially when you're using a crest design. So it's very, um, very much uh, viewable from afar, shall I say. Let's see how this looks. I don't know how I like that. This typeface is called Horizons for people that don't know. Um, yeah, we're gonna switch this. I, I like to. We're gonna also switch up the words. So we're also gonna we're gonna switch this to name here. So we have a little bit longer of a message to convey. Now probably uh, we'll use we'll use something just simple. Well, we're not gonna go crazy. Let me find it real quick. Got so many different typefaces that it's uh, unbelievable the amount. Uh, we'll use something to, you know, simple. So we're gonna go with. Uh, oh, sorry. We want. I clicked the wrong one. Here we go. So we're gonna go to this. Uh, Diamante, Diamant. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, it's pretty typical, you know typeface that you'll see uh, in sporting or so, you know something to that ex extent uh, and we're gonna play with obviously the letting and we'll go with about a 50 right there and call that a day so we have that centered now obviously the reason I have the white box is I want to see how much space we have to play with oh and whoops okay there we go so we obviously want to keep it a little bit of uh, 
breathing room between the two. So you kind of get that type of idea. Um, you know, something simple right there. And that's kind of our first uh, step, okay? So we're obviously gonna be taking this, as you can see, this box. And once you have the spacing you like, you're gonna select both of these. Oh, I totally forgot. Sometimes with this Pathfinder, you're gonna have to duplicate uh, these white boxes. You know, it, it happens. Um, there probably is another way to do it. This is just the way that I've learned to do it. And you're gonna wanna just select each box for a different deletion. And we have that. So now we have our boxes or our you know our spacing type situation going on here our nameplate in the middle for the name uh, you obviously are going to want to create these outlines if you're going to be using it to print or exporting it that way totally up to you and the hardest part I think of this whole thing as I lock the layers so we can't use them is really just lining up a new circle you want to find the center again and I always select this to be red and I throw this under everything just so I know that I'm in the center. Uh, you can do it by eye. I would prefer and I would recommend that you do something to where you're able to really, really, really uh, fine tune where the center is. It's just, it looks a lot easier. It's a lot more of a, uh, oh. Um, you know, precise thing. So, and we have a pretty centered, I would say, for, for the tutorial right now of what we want. And once we have that, I always turn everything off, or the fill off and the stroke off, put the nameplate back on obviously and this is all we'll have now this is called typing on paths you can literally hold type on path tool and I always click on the bottom left now it's gonna automatically go on the path of a circle and we're obviously we're not gonna want the type to be that big um, so we can put something to this extent um, I always kind of eyeball this as well because you can obviously tell this is too high sitting and that's gonna sit much better in the middle of this and uh, I'm gonna del not delete but I'm gonna click the R I for this tool real quick so when I do this I want, I'm looking for something you know some sort of text so text here you know we'll put something like the best person on planet Mars. I don't know. And once you select that, I want to show you guys something very interesting because people will be like, well, how the hell do you get this centered? Very simple. These little tools right here are going to center your, you know, your work. So what we do here is you just kind of take this just move it until you see it being centered obviously I know this is centered because I have uh, points on it and once you have that done you can start playing with uh, spacing uh, different types of typefaces possibly you know some people don't like to use the same typefaces I personally prefer to use the same typefaces or a different um, uh, thickness whatever it has to be now you can see that my spacing changes so I'm gonna have to switch that as well so boom we have that now for the opposite side we're gonna have establish something or other right so we want to hit command C and to paste it in the exact same place you're gonna hit edit paste in place now again this is going to do wonders for you because we are gonna now flip this up and you may think to yourself well that doesn't really solve anything I screwed it up but command C edit 
paste in place. And then we're going to go into path. Or no, I'm trying to figure out where I always screw this part up, but um, here we go. Type, type on path. And we're going to want to do type on path options. So you're going to want to preview and you're going to want to flip. It's the first thing you're going to want to do. You're going to want to switch our align to path to a sender because we're on our baseline and this is the a sender and the spacing can stay the same so once you hit that you hit OK and you're gonna probably if you're doing it the same way I am you're gonna wanna have to keep deleting that uh, not delete but uh, making that uh, invisible uh, layer and you can switch the name or whatever's being said here. So we'll put established 2050, or we'll do 2250. Oops. And I don't want to straighten, or not straighten, center this. And we have it centered. And that is very much a simple crest right here. Now you can obviously do really cool things with these types of, uh, you know, interesting uh, crests. You know, you can add cool things in the insides of, you know, patterns and, and all that stuff. But I don't want to show you guys how to do that because I feel like it will take away from the creative aspect of everything. These are very simple. What I would do for here is I would add you know, some sort of line right here and right here just to kind of pass it all, you know, path it all kind of together. You can obviously do different skew ideas with your type. Um, I'll show you a quick one where you can do, if you create this to outlines, center it obviously, and if you go to effect, uh, warp, arc upper, and you kind of go like that to a negative four on our arc upper. Then if you go effect, uh, warp, arc lower, you do the same thing, minus four, and then you can squeeze this up and it kind of gives you that interesting feel to it again to where you know it has some more fun to it. But uh, this is the basic to a crest. Uh, you can put these on you know, uh, t-shirts, hats, you know, websites, any different types of things. They're so, they're universally used all over the place. Um, obviously, I'd love to see your guys' designs. This is a very simple one. This is a very um, easy going, so, you know, to get into Illustrator and learn Pathfinder and learn type and typesetting. This will get you get going a little bit, and I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Different underlines, different cool different patterns inside these things, having a logo be the center of them, different shapes instead of using circles, using diamonds. There's totally different types of there are ways you guys can do this. This is just a basic idea of what we have going on. Thank you guys again. You guys have been so great um, for the past you know years and years that I've been doing this. Uh, it's just amazing. So thank you guys um, very very much uh you've been great i have been zach and i hope you guys have a good rest of the week look forward to another tutorial all applicable links are in the description